Hi, and welcome to the Shakespeare Underground. My name is Philip Hickman. I'm the artistic director here at Actors Theatre of Columbus. So with the Shakespeare Underground, our uh, usual series of staged readings, we are continuing this summer with our exploration of Shakespeare's Apocrypha, uh, that is plays that may or may not have been written by Shakespeare, plays that Shakespeare may have written a few scenes in, uh, some outright hoaxes. Tonight's show is Sir John Oldcastle, which was first published in 1600 anonymously. Uh, some people later attributed it to Shakespeare after he was dead. Most likely it was written by a group of other authors. So tonight's reading is directed by Bradford Sadler. Of course, we want to thank the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts Council, the Rheinberger Foundation, and the Columbus Foundation for sponsoring Actors Theatre of Columbus. You can sponsor Actors Theatre by donating. There are links below to find out uh, more about donating, taking classes, or becoming a member of Actors Theatre. And of course, we want to thank the sponsors who are specific to the Shakespeare Underground this summer, who are Viewtech Ruff HER Realtors, and Regina Acosta Tobin with Metro Village Realty. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the show. A Herbert! A Herbert! Powis, a Powis! <laughs> I charge ye in his highness's name to keep the peace, you and your followers. Good master sheriff, look unto yourself. Do so, for we have other business. <laughs> Will ye disturb the judges and the courts? Hear the king's proclamation ye were best. Hold then, let's hear it. But be brief, ye were best. Oh, nay, down with them, a poet, a poet. A Herbert, a Herbert! <laughs> hold, in the king's name, hold! Poet, I think thy Welsh and thou do smart. Herbert, I think thy sword came near thy heart. Thy heart's <laughs> best blood shall pay the loss of mine. A Herbert, a Herbert! A poet, a poet! <laughs> My lords, as you are liege men to the crown, true noblemen and subjects to the king, attend his highness's proclamation. Good master mayor of Hereford, be brief. The king's justices, perceiving what public mischief may ensue this private quarrel, in his majesty's name, do straightly charge and command all persons, of what degree soever, to depart the city of Hereford, except such as are bound to give attendance at this court, and that no man presume to wear any weapon, especially Welsh hooks, forest bills, and that the Lord Powys do presently disperse and discharge his retinue, and depart the city in the king's peace, he and his followers on pain of imprisonment. A Powys, a Powys! A Herbert, a Herbert! <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Lord Herbert? Is he hurt or slain? He's here, my lord. How fares his lordship, friends? Mortally wounded, speechless, he cannot live. Convey him hence, let not his wounds take air and get him dressed with expedition. Master Mayor of Hereford, Master Sheriff, commit Lord Powys to safe custody to answer the disturbance of the peace. Lord Herbert's peril and his high contempt of us and you, the King's commissioners, see it be done with care and diligence. Please it, your lordship, my lord Powys is gone, past all recovery. Yet let search be made to apprehend his followers that are left. Sirs, I shall lay hold of them. Away with them. And it please your lordship, these are all but one. Riotous, audacious, and unruly grooms, must we be forced to come from the bench to quiet brawls, which every constable in other civil places can suppress? What was the quarrel that caused all this stir? About religion, as I heard, my lord. Lord Powys detracted from the power of Rome, affirming Wycliffe's doctrine to be true, and Rome's erroneous. 
Hot reply was made by the Lord Herbert, they were traitors all that would make in it. Poes answered, they were as true, as noble, and as wise as he that would defend it with their lives. He named, for instance, Sir John Oldcastle, the Lord Cobham. Herbert replied again, he, thou, and all are traitors that so hold. The lie was given, the several factions drawn, and so enraged that we could not appease it. This case concerns the king's prerogative and is dangerous to the state and commonwealth. Gentlemen, justices, Master Mayor, and Master Shreve, it doth behoove us all and each of us in general and particular to have care for suppressing of all mutinies and all assemblies, except soldiers' musters for the king's preparation into France. We hear of secret conveniences made, and there is thought of some conspiracies, which may break out into rebellious arms when the king's gone, perchance before he go. Note, as an instance, this one perilous fray. What factions might have grown on either part to the destruction of the king and realm? Yet, in my conscience, Sir John Oldcastle, innocent of it, only his name was used. We, therefore, from his highness, give this charge. You, Master Mayor, look to your citizens, you, Master Sheriff, unto your shire, and you, as justices, in everyone's precinct, there be no meetings. Now, my Lord Bishop, take free liberty to speak your mind. What is your suit to us? Grievous complaints have passed between the lips of envious persons to upbraid the clergy, some carping at the livings which we have, and others spurning at the ceremonies that are of ancient custom in the church, amongst the which John Oldcastle is a chief. What inconvenience may proceed hereof, both to the king and to the commonwealth, may easily be discerned when, like a frenzy, this innovation shall possess their minds. These upstarts will have followers to uphold their damned opinion more than Harry shall to undergo his quarrel against the French. What proof is there against them to be had, that what you say the law may justify? As they give themselves the name of Protestants, and meet in fields and solitary groves. Was ever heard, my lord, the like till now, that thieves and rebels splut, heretics should have to color their vile practices, a title of such worth as Protestant? Oh, but you must not swear. It ill becomes one of your coat to wrap out bloody oaths. It pardon him, good my lord, it, it is his zeal, an honest country prelate who laments to see such foul disorder in the church. There's one, they call him Sir John Oldcastle. He has not his name for naught, for like a castle doth he encompass them within his walls. But till that castle be subverted again, we ne'er shall be at quiet in the realm. That is not our suit, my lord, that he be ta'en and brought in question for his heresy. Beside, two letters brought me out of Wales, wherein my lord Hereford writes to me, what tumult and sedition was begun about John Oldcastle at the courts there, for they had much ado to calm the rage, and that the valiant Herbert there is slain. The king is coming. Fear ye not, my lord, the very first thing I will break with him shall be about your matter. My lord of Suffolk, was it not said the clergy did refuse to lend us monies towards our wars in France? It was, my lord, but very wrongfully. I know it was, for Huntington here tells me they have been very bountiful of late. And still they vow, my gracious lord, to be so, hoping your majesty will think of them as of your loving subjects, and suppress all such malicious errors as begin to stop their calling and disturb the church. Oh, God else forbid. Well, why, Suffolk, is there any new rupture to disquiet them? No new, my lord. The old is great enough, and so increasing as, if not cut down, will breed a scandal to your royal state, and set your kingdom quickly in an uproar. The Kentish knight, Old Castle, in despite of any law or spiritual discipline, maintains this upstart new religion still, and diverse great assemblies by his means and private quarrels are commenced abroad, as by this letter more at large, my liege, is made apparent. We do find it here. There was in Wales a certain fray of late between two noblemen, but what of this? 
Follows it straight old castle? <laughs> Must be he did cause the same? I dare be sworn, good knight. He never dreamt of any such contention. But in his name the quarrel did begin, about the opinion which he held, my liege. Well, how if it did? Was either he in place to take part with them or abet them in it? I mean, if brawling fellows whose enkindled blood sees their fiery veins will needs go fight, making their quarrels of some words that passed either of you or you amongst their cups, is the fault yours? Or are they guilty of it? The pardon of your highness, my dread lord. Such little sparks neglected may in time grow to a mighty flame. But that's not all. He doth beside maintain a strange religion and will not be compelled to come to mass. We do beseech you therefore, gracious prince, without offense unto your majesty, we may be bold to use authority. As how? Uh, to summon him unto your grace where such offenses have their punishment. But to answer personally, is that your meaning? It is, my lord. And how if he appeal? Oh, he cannot, my lord, in a case such as this. Not where religion is the plea, my lord. Now, I took it always that ourself stood out as a sufficient refuge unto whom not any but might lawfully appeal. But will not argue now upon that point. For Sir John Oldcastle, whom you accuse, let me entreat you to dispense a while with your high title of preeminence. Report did never yet condemn him so, but he hath always been reputed loyal. And in my knowledge, I can say thus much, that he is virtuous, wise, and honorable. If any way in his conscience be subdued, to uh, su su seduce to waver in his faith, I'll send for him and school him privately. If that serve not, then afterwards you may proceed against him. Suffolk, be you the messenger for us, and will him presently repair to court. How now, my lord, why stand you discontent? In sooth, methinks the king hath well decreed. Yea, yea, Rotham, if he would keep his word. But I perceive he favors him so much as this will be to small effect, I fear. Why, then, I'll tell you what you are best to do. If you suspect the king will be but cold in apprehending him, send you a process, too, to serve upon him, so you may be sure to make him answered, howsoe'er it fall. And well remembered. I will have it so. A summoner shall be sent about it straight. Yea, do so. In the mean space this remains. For kind Sir John of Rotham, honest Jack, I am not as the world doth take me for. If ever wolf were clothed in sheep's coat, then I am he. Old huddle and twang, you faith a priest in show, but in plain terms a thief. Yet let me tell you too, an honest thief, one that will take it where it may be spared and spend it freely in good fellowship. Besides, to comfort me, for what's this life except the crabbed bitterness there be sweetened now and then with lechery? I have my doll, my concubine, as it were, to frolic with the lusty, bouncing girl. But whilst I loiter here, the gold may escape, and that must not be so. It is mine own. Therefore, I'll meet him on his way to court and shrive him of it. There will be the sport. Thou peevish, froward man, what wouldst thou have? This pride, this pride brings all to beggary. I served your father and your grandfather. Show me such two men now. No, no, your backs, your backs, the devil and pride hath cut the throat of all good housekeeping. Yea, except thou have a crew of seely knaves and sturdy rogues still feeding at my gate. There is no hospitality with thee. They may sit at the gate well enough, except they will eat stones. Is long then of such hungry knaves as you. Yea, sir, here's your retinue. Your guests be welcome. God bless your honor. God save the good Lord John Oldcastle. And all his house. Good, your honor, bestow your blessed alms upon poor men. Now, sir, 
here be your alms knight. Now are you as safe as the emperor. Your foolish alms maintains more vagabonds than all the noblemen in Kent beside. Out, you rogues, you knaves, work for your livings. Alas, poor men, oh lord, they may beg their hearts out. There's no more charity amongst men than amongst so many mastiff dogs. What make you here, you needy knaves? Away, away, you villains. I beseech you, sir, be good to us. Nay, nay, they know thee well enough. I think that all the beggars in this land are thy acquaintance. Go bestow your alms. None will control you, sir. What should I give them? You are grown so beggarly, you have scarce a bit of bread to give at your door. You talk of your religion so long that you have banished charity from amongst you. If thou wilt give them nothing, send them hence. Let them not stand here starving in the cold. I drive them hence? If I drive poor men from your door, I'll be hanged. I know not what I may come to myself. Go, you old fool. Give the poor people something. Go in, poor men, into the inner court, and take such alms as there is to be had. God bless your honor. Hang you, rogues. Hang you. There's nothing but misery amongst you. You, you fear no law, you. What fellows yonder comes along the grove? I know the clergy hate me to death, and my religion gets me many foes, and this may be some desperate rogue suborn to work me mischief. As it pleaseth God, if he come toward me, sure I'll stay his coming, be he but one man, whatsoe'er he be. I have been well acquainted with that faith. Well met, my honorable lord and friend. You are welcome, sir, whate'er you be. But of this sudden, sir, I do not know you. I am one that wisheth well unto your honor. My name is Poes, an old friend of yours. My honorable lord and worthy friend, what makes your lordship thus alone in Kent and thus disguised in this strange attire? My lord, an unexpected accident hath at this time enforced me to these parts. And thus it happed, not yet full five days since, now at the last high courts of Hereford. It chanced that the Lord Herbert and myself, amongst other things, discoursing at the table did fall in speech about some certain points of Wycliffe's doctrine against the papacy and the religion Catholic maintained through the most part of Europe at this day. This willful, testy lord stuck not to say that Wycliffe was a knave, a schismatic, his doctrine devilish and heretical, and whatsoever he has maintained the same was both traitor to God and to his country. Being moved at his peremptory speech, I told him some maintained those opinions, men and truer subjects than Lord Herbert was. And he replying in comparisons, your name was urged, my lord, against his challenge, to be a perfect favorer of the truth, and to be short, from words we fell to blows, our servants and our tenants taking parts. Many on both sides hurt, and for an hour the broil by no means could be pacified, until the judges, rising from their bench, were in their persons forced to part the fray. I hope no man was violently slain. Faith none, I trust, but the Lord Herbert's self, who is in truth so dangerously hurt, as it is doubted, he can hardly scape. I am sorry, my good lord, of these ill news. This is the cause that drives me into Kent to shroud myself with you, so good a friend, until I hear how things do speed at home. Your lordship is most welcome unto Cobham. But I'm very sorry, my good lord, my name was brought in to question this matter, considering I have many enemies that threaten malice and do lie in wait to take advantage of the smallest thing. 
but you are welcome and repose your lordship and keep yourself here secret in my house till we hear how the lord herbert speeds here comes my man sir ralph what news yonder's one mastered suffolk of the privy chamber is set unto you from the king i pray god the lord herbert be not dead and the king hearing whither i am gone hath sent for me Comfort yourself, my lord, I warrant you. Fellow, what ails thee? Dost thou quake? Dost thou shake? Dost thou tremble? Hmm? <laughs> you old fool. Sirrah, convey this gentleman in the back way and bring the other into the walk. Come, sir, you are welcome if you love my lord. God have mercy, gentle friend. I thought as much that it would not be long before I heard of something from the king about this matter. Welcome, good Master Suffolk. Thanks, my good lord. His majesty doth commend his love unto your lordship and wills you to repair into the court. God bless his highness and confound his enemies. I hope his majesty is well. In health, my lord. God long continue it. Go with me in and bestow upon me his high tidings. I humbly thank your lordship. I will attend you. I have the law to warrant what I do. And though Lord Oldcastle be a noble man that dispenses not with the law, I dare serve my process were he five noble men. <laughs> Though we summoners make sometimes a mad slip in the corner with a pretty wench, a summoner must not go always by seeing. A man may be content to hide his eyes where he may feel his profit. <laughs> well, this is my Lord Oldcastle's house, if I can devise to speak with him. If not, I'll clap my citation upon his door, so my Lord Rochester bid me. But methinks here comes one of his men. Welcome, good fellow, welcome. Oh. Who wouldst thou speak with? With my Lord Oldcastle I would speak, if thou be one of his men. Yes, I am one of his men, but thou canst not speak with my lord. May I send to him then? I'll tell thee that when I know thy errand. <laughs> I will not tell my errand to thee. <laughs> then keep it to thyself, and walk like a knave as thou camest. I tell thee. My lord keeps no name, sirrah. Then thou servest him not, I believe. What lord is thy master? My lord of Rochester. <laughs> In good time, and what wouldst thou have had with my lord Oldcastle? I come by virtue of a process to order him before my lord at the court of Rochester. <laughs> My lord is not at home. Therefore, it were good, summoner, you carried your process back. Why, if he will not be spoken with all, then will I leave it here and see you that he take knowledge of it. <laughs> Swoons, you rogue, do you set up your bills here? Go to, take it down again. Dost thou know what thou dost? Dost thou know on whom thou servest process? Yes, Mary. Sir John Oldcastle, Lord Cobham. I am glad thou knowest him yet, and Sirrah, dost thou not know that the Lord Cobham is a brave lord, and every day feeds a hundred poor people at his gate and keeps a hundred tall fellows? What's that to my process? Mary, 
this, sir? Is this process parchment? Yes, Mary. And this seal wax? It is so. If this be parchment and this wax, eat you this parchment and this wax, or I will make a parchment of your skin and beat your brains into the wax. Sira Sumner, dispatch. Devour, Sira, devour. Uh, I am my Lord Rochester's summoner. I came to do my office, and thou shalt answer it. Thou shalt eat no worse than thou bringst with thee. Thou bringst it for my lord. And wilt thou bring my lord worse than thou wilt eat thyself? Sirrah, I brought it not, my lord, to eat. <laughs> oh, do you stir me now? All's one for that, but I'll make you eat it for bringing it. I cannot eat it. Can you not? Blood, I'll beat you until you have a stomach. Oh, 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 hold, 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 oh, good master serving man, I will eat it, oh, Lord, oh. Feed. Uh, wholesome rogue, wholesome, cannot you, uh, honest summoner, walk with the devil, your brother, but you must come to a noble man's house with Process? Blood! <laughs> Yay, Mary, sit. So I mean, you shall eat more than your own word, for I'll make you eat all the words in the process. Why, you drab monger, cannot the secrets of all the wenches in a shire serve your turn, but you must come hither with a citation, with a pox? I'll cite you. A cup of sack for the summoner. Here, rogue, I drink to thee. I thank you. Now, if thou find'st thy stomach well, thou shalt have a piece of grief to the breakfast. Oh, I, I am, I am very well, sir. Good master, serving man, I, I thank you. Very well, sir. Then be walking towards Rochester to keep your stomach warm. God be with you, master, serving man. Farewell, Sumner. <sighs> God save you, master Harpool. Welcome, Constable. Welcome, sweet lass. Welcome. A ripe girl by the mass. A sweet girl. Ooh, doll. <laughs> well said, Master Harpool. You are a merry old man in faith. Now, by the mass, a pretty wench indeed. I thank you, good Master Serving Man, and Master Constable also. Wilt thou forsake this priest and go with me? Oh, if this old priest would not stick to me, by Jove, I might with you, old serving man. Oh, well said, Master Harpool. You are heart of oak when all's done. Oh, doll, thou hast a sweet pair of lips by the mass. Truly, you are a most sweet old man as ever I saw. By my troth, you have a face able to make any woman in love with you. Doll, canst thou love me? A mad merry lass. Ah, oh, would to God I had never seen thee. I warrant you, you are not out of my thoughts this twelve month. Truly, you are as full of favor as a man may be. Ah, these sweet gray locks. By my troth, they are most lovely. I will have one kiss, too. None for you, Constable. Hand off, hand off. Well, by Our Lady, I would love kissing her as well as you. Oh, you're an odd boy. You have a wanton eye of your own. 
You sweet sugar-lipped wanton, you will win as many women's hearts as come in your company. Doll, come hither. Priest, she shall not. I'll come anon, sweet love. Hands off, old fornicator. Vicar, I'll sit here in spite of thee. Is this fit stuff for a priest to carry up and down with him? You horse and stone vicar? You old stale ruffin. Swoons, vicar. I'll geld you. Keep the king's peace. Murder, murder, murder! You horse and body priest? You old mutton monger! Hold, Sir Rotham, hold! I pray thee, sweet, be quiet. I was but sitting to drink a pot of ale with him, even as kind a man as ever I met with. Thou art a thief, I warrant thee. Then I am but as thou have, has been in thy days. Let's not be ashamed of our trade. The king has been a thief himself. Come, be quiet. Hast thou sped? I have, wench. Here be crowns in, they, in faith. Come, let's all be friends then. Well said, Mistress Dorothy, in faith. Thou art the maddest priest that ever I met with. Give me thy hand. Thou art as good a fellow. I am a singer, a drinker, a bencher, a wencher. I can say a mass and kiss a lass. Well said, mad priest. We'll in and be friends. Tis not enough, old castle, to submit. You must forsake your gross opinion. The bishops find themselves much injured, and though for some good service you have done, we for our part are pleased to pardon you, yet well, they will not be so soon satisfied. My gracious lord, unto your majesty, next unto my god, I owe my life. And what is mine, either by nature's gift, Fortune's bounty, all is at your service. But for obedience to the Pope of Rome, I owe him none, nor shall his robed priests that are in England alter my belief. If out of Holy Scripture they can prove that I am in, in error, I will yield and gladly take instructions at their hands. But otherwise, I do beseech your grace. My conscience may not be encroached upon. We would be loath to press our subjects' bodies, much less, much less their souls. The dear redeemed part of him that is the ruler of us all. Yet let me counsel thee that might command. Do not presume to tempt them with ill words, nor suffer any meetings to be had within your house. But to the uttermost, disperse the flocks of this new gathering sect. My liege, if any breeze that dare comes forth, say my life in any of these points deserves the attainder of innova thoughts. Here stand I, craving no remorse at all, but even the utmost rigor may be shown. Let it suffice. We know your loyalty. What have you there? A deed of clemency. Your Highness is pardoned for Lord Poes's life, which I did beg and you, my noble lord, of gracious favor, did vouchsafe to grant. But it is not yet signed with our hand? Not yet, my liege. There tis his pardon. Bid him make amends and cleanse his soul to God for his obedience. What we remit is but the body's scourge. How now, Lord Bishop? Justice, dread sovereign, as thou art king, so grant I may have justice. What means this exclamation? Let us ah, know. My good lord, the state's abused and our decrees most shamefully profaned. How? Or by whom? Even by this heretic, this vile, low traitor to your majesty. Prelate, thou liest even in thy greasy ma, or whosoever twits me with the name of either traitor or a heretic. Forbear, I say. And Bishop, show how the cause from whence this late abuse has, abuse has been derived. Thus, mighty king, 
By general consent, a messenger was sent to cite this lord to make appearance in the consistory and coming to his house, a ruffian slave, one of his daily followers, met a man who, knowing him to be a parator, assaults him first and after, in contempt of us and our proceedings, makes him eat the written process, parchment, scale, and all, whereby his master neither was brought forth nor we but scorned for our authority. And when was this done? At six o'clock this morning. And when came you to court? Well, last night, my lord. Well, by this it seems he is not guilty of it. And you have done him wrong to accuse him so. But it was done, my lord, by his appointment. Or else this man durst never have been so bold. Or else you durst be bold to interrupt and fill our ears with frivolous complaints. Is this the duty you do bear to us? Was it not sufficient we did pass our word to send for him, but you misdoubting it, or, which is worse, intending to forestall our regal power, must likewise summon him? This savors of ambition, not of zeal, and rather proves you malice his estate than any way that he offends the law. Go to, we like it not. And he, your officer, that was employed so much amiss herein, had desert for being insolent. <laughs> so, Sir John, when you please, you may depart. I humbly bid farewell unto my leave. Farewell. What is the news by Huntington? The false lord of Scroop and Decru, my lord, of bold seditious rebels are in arms, intending reformation of religion. And with their army, they intend to pitch in thicket field unless they be repulsed. So near our presence. <sighs> Dare they be so bold. And will proud war and eager thirst of blood, whom we'd had thought to entertain so far off, press forth upon us in our native bounds? Must we be forth to hand sell our sharp blades in England here, which well, we prepared for France? Well, God's name be it. What does their number say? Or... Who is the chief commander of this route? Their number is not known as yet, my lord, but tis reported Sir John Oldcastle is the chief man on whom they do depend. How? The good Sir John? I could have told your majesty as much before he went, but that I saw your grace was too much blinded by his flattery. Then post, my lord, to fetch him back again. Traitor unto his country how he smoothed and seemed as innocent as truth itself. I cannot think it yet he would be false. But, well, if he be no matter, let him go. We'll meet both him and them unto their woe. This falls out well, and at the last I hope to see this heretic die in a rope. Once more, my lord of Cambridge, make rehearsal how you do stand entitled to the crown. Then thus, Lord Scroop, Sir Thomas Gray, and you, Monsieur de Chartres, agent for the French. This Lionel, Duke of Clarence, as I said, third son of Edward, England's king, the third, had issue Philip, his sole daughter and heir, which Philip afterward was given in marriage to Edmund Mortimer, the Earl of March, and by him had a son called Roger Mortimer, which Roger likewise had of his descendant Edmund, Roger, Anne, and Eleanor, two daughters and two sons. But those three died without issue, and Anne, that did survive, and now was left her father's only heir, my fortune was to marry. Being, too, that my grandfather of King Edward's line, so of his surname, I am called, you know, Richard Plantagenet. My father was Edward, the Duke of York, and son and heir to Edmund Langley, Edward III's fifth son. So it seems your claim comes by your wife, as lawful heir to Roger Mortimer, the son of Edmund, which did marry Philip, daughter and heir to Lionel, Duke of Clarence. I am resolved our enterprise is just. Every shall die, or else resign his crown. 
perform but that, and Charles, the King of France, shall aid you, lords, not only with his men, but send you money to maintain your wars. Five hundred thousand crowns he made me proffer, if you can stop but Harry's voyage for France. We never had a fitter time than now. The realm is in such division as it is. Besides, you must persuade ye, there is due vengeance for Richard's murder, which, although it be deferred, yet will it fall at last, and now as likely as another time. Sin hath had many years to ripen in, and now the harvest cannot be far off, wherein the weeds of usurpation are to be cropped and cast into the fire. No more, Earl Cambridge. Here I plight my faith, to set up thee and thy renowned wife. Bray will perform the same, as he is knight. And to assist ye, as I said before, Charters doth gauge the honor of his king. We lack but now John Oldcastle's fellowship, and then our plot were absolute indeed. Oh, doubt not of him, my lord. His life's pursued by the incensed clergy, and of late brought in displeasure with the king, assures me he may be quickly won unto our faction. Who hath the articles were drawn at large of our whole purpose? That have I, my lord. Ah, uh, we should not now be far off from his house. Our serious conference hath beguiled the way. See where the castle stands. Here, give me the writing. Here comes the man himself. Booted and spurred, it seems he hath been riding. Well met, Lord Old Castle. My lord of Cambridge, your honor is most welcome into Kent, and all the rest of this fair company. I am new come from London, gentle lord. We were intended to have been your guests, but now this lucky meeting shall suffice to end our business and defer that kindness. Business, my lord? What business should you have but to be merry? That is indeed the thing we all desire. My lords and you shall have your choice with me. Nay, but the stag which we desire to strike lives not in cowling. If you will consent and go with us, we will bring you to a forest where runs a lusty herd, among the which there's a stag superior to the rest, a stately beast that when his fellows run, he leads the race and beats the sullen earth as though he scorned it with his trampling hoofs. Aloft he bears his head and with his breast like a huge bulwark counterchecks the wind. And when he standeth still, he stretches forth his proud, ambitious neck as if he meant to wound the firmament with forked horns. It is pity such a goodly beast should die. Oh, not so, Sir John, for he is tyrannous, and he gores the other deer, and will not keep within the limits are appointed him. Of late he's broken into a several, which doth belong to me, and there he spoils both corn and pasture. Two of his wild race, alike for stealth and covetous encroaching, already are removed. If he were dead, I should not only be secure from hurt, but with his body make a royal feast. How say you then? Will you first hunt with us? Faith, lords, I like the pastime. Where's the place? Where is this writing? It will show you all and what occasion we have for the sport. Call ye this hunting, my lords? Is this the stag you fain would chase? Harry, our dread king? So we may make a banquet for the devil, and in the stead of wholesome meat, prepare a dish of poison to confound ourselves. Why so, John Oldcastle, see you not our claim? And how imperiously he holds the crown? Besides, you know yourself is in disgrace held as a recreant and pursued to death, this will defend you from your enemies and establish your religion through the land. Treason. Yet I will conceal my secret thoughts to sound the depth of it. My lord of Cambridge, I do see your claim and what good may redound unto the land by prosecuting of this enterprise. But where are the men? 
wears power and furniture to order such an action. We are weak. Harry, you know, is a mighty potentate. Tut, we are strong enough, and you are beloved, and many will gladly follow you. We are alike, and some will follow us. Besides, there is hope from France. Here's an, ambition, here's an ambassador that promised both men and money, too. Some likelihood, I must confess to speed. But how shall I believe this is plain truth? You are, my lord, such men as live in court, and highly have been favored of the king, especially Lord Scroop, whom oftentimes he maketh choice of for his bedfellow. And you, Lord Grey, are of his privy council. Is not this a train to entrap my life? Well, then perish my soul. What? Think you so? We'll swear to you. Take the sacrament. Nay, you are noble men. I imagine, as you are honorable by birth and blood, so you will be in heart, in thought, in word. I crave no other testimony but this, that you would all subscribe and set your hands unto this writing you gave me. With all our hearts. Who hath any pen or ink? My pocket should have one. Yea, here it is. Ah. Give it me, Scroop. Ah, there is my name. And there is my name. And mine. Sir, let me crave that you would likewise write your name with theirs for confirmation of your master's word, the King of France. That will I, noble lord. So now, this action well knit together. <laughs> And I am for you. Where's our meeting, Lord? Ah, uh, here, if you please. <laughs> the 10th of July next. Intent? Agreed. Now, let us in to supper. I hope your honors will not away tonight. Oh, yes, presently, for I have far to ride about soliciting to other friends. And we would not be absent from the court, lest thereby grow suspicion in the king. Yet taste a cup of wine before you go? Oh, not now, my lord. We thank you. And so, farewell. Farewell, my noble lords. My noble lords. My noble villains. Base conspirators. How can they look his highness in the face whom they so closely study to betray? But I'll not sleep until I make it known. This head shall not be burdened with such thoughts, nor in this heart will I conceal a deed of such impiety against my king. You are welcome home, my lord. Why see me so disquiet in your looks? Bad news, I am afraid, touching my husband. Madam, not so. There is your husband's part. Long may he live, each joy unto the other. So great a kindness as I know not how to make reply. My sense is quite confounded. Let that alone. And madam, stay me not, for I must back unto the court again with all the speed I can. Our pool, my horse. So soon, my lord? What, will you ride all night? All night or day, it must be so, sweet wife. Lord Poes, bear with me. And madam, think you're welcome now. My house is at your use. Harpool, away. I prithee, Harpool, look unto thy lord. I do not like this sudden posting back. Come, madam and my lord, we'll hope the best. You shall not into Wales till he return. By my troth, thou art as jealous a man as lives. Canst thou blame me, doll? Thou art my lands, my goods, my jewels, my wealth, my purse. 
I am as true to thee as the stone is in the wall, and thou knowest well enough I wasn't as good doing when I came to thee as any wench need to be. And therefore thou hast tried me that thou hast. By God's body, I will not be kept as I have been, that I will not. You might have left me at the old castle house until you had been better provided for. No, sweet doll, no, I do not like that. Yon old ruffian is not for the priest. I do not like a new clerk should come in the old belfry. <laughs> Thou art a mad priest, your faith. Come, doll. I'll see thee safe at some alehouse here at Cray, and the next sheep that comes shall leave his fleece. My lord of Suffolk, Post away for life, and let our forces of such horse and foot as can be gathered up by any means make speedy rendezvous in Tuddle Fields. It must be done this evening, my lord. This night the rebels mean to draw to head near Islington, which, if your speed prevent not, if once they should unite their several forces, their power is almost thought invinc invincible. Away, my lord. I will be with you soon. I go, my sovereign, with all happy speed. Make haste, my lord of Suffolk, as you love us. Huntington, post you to London with all speed. Command the mayor and sheriffs on their allegiance. The city gates be presently shut up and guarded with a strong, sufficient watch, and not a man be suffered to pass without a special warrant from ourself. Command the postern by the tower be kept, and proclamation on the pain of death that not a citizen stir from his doors, except such that the mayor and sheriff shall choose for their own guard and safety of their persons. Huntington away, have care unto my charge. I go, my sovereign. Stay. My lord. Go down by Greenwich, and command a boat at Friars Bridge to attend my coming down. I will, my lord. It's time, I think, to look unto rebellion, when Lord Scroop doth expect unto his aid no less than 50,000 Londoners. Well, all to Westminster, in this disguise, to hear what news is stirring in these brawls. Stand, true man, says a thief. Well, stand, thief, says a true man. How if a thief? Stand, thief, too. Well, then, thief or a true man, I, I see I must stand. What art thou? A good fellow. Well, so am I, too. I see thou dost know me. Thou be a good fellow. Play the good fellow's part. Deliver thy purse without more ado. Well, I... I have no money. <laughs> I must make you find some before we part. If you have no money, you shall have war. So as many soft, sound, dry blows as your skin can carry. Is that the plain truth? Sarah, no more do. Come, come, give me the money you have. Dispatch, I cannot stand all day. Well, if thou needst have it, there tis. Just the proverb, one thief robs another. How much is aunt of thy word? A hundred pound in ducats, on my word. Stira, what art thou? Thou seem'st a gentleman. I am, no less, yet a poor one now, for thou hast all my money. From whence camest thou? From the court at Eltham. Art thou one of the king's servants? Yes, <laughs> y yes, that I am, and one of his chamber. I'm glad thou art no worse. Thou mayest the better spare the money, and thinkest thou thou mightst get a poor thief his pardon, if you should have need? Oh, yes. Yes, that I can. Will thou do so much for me when I shall have occasion? Yes. Faith I will, so it be for no murder. Nay, I am a pitiful thief. All the hurt I do a man, I take but his purse. I'll kill no man. Then, of my word, I'll do it. Give me the hand of the same. There it is. <laughs> Methinks the king should be good to thieves because he has been a thief himself. Oh, I think now he be turned true man. 
Oh, faith, I have heard indeed he has had an ill name that way in his youth. But how canst thou tell he has been a thief? How? Because he once robbed me before I fell to the trade myself. When that foul, villainous guts that led him to all that roguery was in his company there, that Falstaff. He did rob thee then. Thou art but even with him now, I'll be sworn. Thou knowest not the king now, I think, if thou sawest him. Not I, in faith. So it should seem. Well, if old King Henry had lived, this king that is now had made thieving the best trade in England. Why so? Because he was the chief warden of our company. It's pity that ere he should have been a, th been a king. He was so brave a thief. But, sir, wilt remember my pardon if need be? Oh, yes. Faith will I. God have mercy. Farewell. Oh, my fine gold. Here's for thee, wench. Now, doll, we will revel in our bower. Well, I hear there is a company of rebels up against the king, got together in Ficket Field near Holborn. And as it is thought here in Kent, the king will be there tonight in his own person. Well, I'll to the king's camp, and it shall go hard, but there be any doings, I'll make some good boot amongst them. <laughs> Oh, my lord of Suffolk and of Huntington. Who scouts it now? Or who stands sentinels? May it please your highness. Oh, peace. No more of that. The king is asleep. <laughs> Wake not his majesty with terms nor titles. He's at rest in bed. <laughs> is London looked unto? It is, my lord. Were you in bed, well might you take your rest. I thank ye, lords. But you do know of old that I have been a perfect night walker. London, you say, is safely looked unto? Alas, poor rebels, there your aid must fail. And the noble good squire, Sir John Oldcastle, well, he's quiet in Kent. Scroop, ye are deceived. Reckon again you count with your host. Tomorrow you shall give account to us. Till when, my friends, this long cold winter's night, how can we spend? King Harry is asleep, and all his lords these garments do tell us. <laughs> all friends at football, fellows all in field. Ah, bring us a drum. Give us some square dice. We'll keep this court of guard for all good fellows' companies that come. <laughs> oh, where is that mad priest you told me was in arms? To fight as well as to pray, if need required. <laughs> He's in the camp, and if he know of this, I undertake he would not be long hence. I have the dice. What do we play at? Ooh. Oh! Hey! <laughs> Passage, if ye please. Set round then, so at all. Give me the dice. I pass for 20 pound. Here is to our lucky passage into France. Harry, <laughs> you pass indeed, for you sweep all. Uh, a sign, King Harry shall sweep mm. all in France. <laughs> and ye, good fellows, take a fresh gamester in. Oh, Master Parson. Well, we play nothing but gold. And fellow, I tell thee that the priest hath gold. <laughs> Blood, ye are but Peggardly soldiers to me. I think I have more gold than all you three. <laughs> it may be so, but we believe it not. Oh, set, priest, set. I pass for all that gold. <sighs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> you pass indeed. Oh, priest, hast thou any more? Zoons, what a question's that. Ooh. I tell thee I have more than all you three at these ten ducats. Oh, now I wonder how thou camest by all this gold. Just wonder how I come by gold. I wonder rather how poor soldiers should have gold. <laughs> For I'll tell thee, good fellow, we have every day tithes, offerings, christenings, weddings, burials, and you poor snakes come seldom to a booty. <laughs> Harry, ye are out. Oh, right. Now, 
person. Shake the dice. Accept, accept. <laughs> I'll cover you tall. <laughs> a plague aunt. I am out. The devil, the dice, and a wench. Who will trust them? Sayest thou so, priest? Set fair at all for once. Out, sir. Pay all. <laughs> but pay me ducat gold. Hell none of your cracked French crowns nor pistolets. Pay me fair ducat gold as I pay you. Oh, no cracked French crowns? Well, I, I hope to see more cracked French crowns ere long. Thou meanest of Frenchmen's crowns when the king is in France. Oh, give me the dice. Tis I must shred the priest. At all, Sir Rotham. The devil and all is yours at that. <laughs> Death, what casting is this? Well thrown, Harry! <laughs> Thou passest all that e'er I played with. Set, parson, set. The dice die in my hand. When, parson, when? What, ye can find no more. All's gone but that. What? Have a broken ducat. Why, sir, tis gold. Yea, then I'll cover it. The devil do ye good, aunt. I am blind. Ye have blown me up. Nay, Terry Priest, ye shall not leave us yet. Do not these pieces fit each other well? What if they do? Oh, well, thereby begins a tale. There was a thief in face much like Sir John, but, well, t'was not he. <laughs> that thief was in all green. Met me last day at Blackheath, near the park, with him a woman. Well, I was all alone and weaponless. My boy had all my tools, and was before providing me a boat. Short tale to make, Sir John, uh, <clears throat> the thief, I mean, took just a hundredth pound in gold from me. Oh, I stormed at it, and swore to be revenged, if e'er we met. He, like a lusty thief, break with his teeth this angel, just into to be a token at our meeting next. Well met, Sir John. Betake ye to your tools by torchlight, for Master Parson, you are he that had my gold. Rotham, have at ye! <laughs> Soldier, wear your sconce. Hold, villains, hold! My lords, what do you mean to see traitor draw against the king? Sheriff, what news? Why dost thou trouble us? Please it, your highness, it is break of day, and as I scouted near to Islington, the gray-eyed morning gave me glimmering of armed men coming down Highgate Hill, who by their courses are coasting hitherward. Let us withdraw, my lords. Prepare our troops to charge the rebels, if there be such cause. For this lewd priest, this devilish hypocrite, that is a thief, a gamester and what not. Let him be hanged up for example's sake. Not so, my gracious sovereign. I confess that I am a frail man, huh. in blood as others are, but set my imperfections aside. By this light, ye have not a truer subject to the crown and state than Sir John of Rotham. Oh, will a true subject rob his king? Alas, t'was ignorance and want, my gracious liege. Oh, t'was want of grace. Why, you should be as sought to season others with good document. Your lives as lamps to give the people light, as shepherds, not wolves, to spoil the flock. Go, hang him, Suffolk. I must confess, I saw some of your gold, but... My dread lord, I am in no humor for death. Therefore save my life. God will that sinners live. Do not you cause me die. Once in their lives the best may go astray. And if the world say true, yourself, my liege, have been a thief. Look, I confess I have. But I repent and have reclaimed myself. So will I do if you will give me time. Wilt thou? My lords, will you be his sureties? That when he robs again, he shall be hanged. I <laughs> ask no more. And we will grant thee that. Live and repent and prove an honest man, which when I hear and safe return from France, I will give thee living. 
Till then, take thy gold, but spend it better than at cards or wine, for better virtues fit that coat of thine. My liege, if ye have cause of battle, ye shall see Sir John of Rotham bestir himself in your quarrel. Long live the king! I tell ye, lady, it's not possible, but you should know where he conveys himself and you have hid him in some secret place. My lord, believe me, as I have a soul, I know not where my lord, my husband, is. Go to, go to, you are a heretic, and will be forced by torture to confess, if fair means will not serve to make ye tell. My husband is a noble gentleman, and need not hide himself for any fact that e'er I heard of, therefore wrong him not. Your husband is a dangerous schismatic, traitor to God, the king, and the commonwealth. And therefore, my lord warden, sheriff of Kent, I charge you, take her to your custody and seize the goods of Sir John Oldcastle to the king's use. Let her go in no more to fetch so much as her apparel out. There is your warrant from his majesty. Good my lord bishop, pacify your wrath against the lady. Then let her confess where Old Castle her husband is concealed. I dare engage mine honor and my life. Poor gentlewoman, she is ignorant and innocent of all his practices, if any evil by him be practiced. If, my lord warden, nay, then I charge you that all open ports whereof you are chief be sealed forthwith that he escape us not. I am sorry for the noble gentleman. Peace, he comes here. Now, do your office. Harpool, what business have we here in hand? What makes the bishop and the sheriff here? I fear my coming home is dangerous. Be of good cheer, my lord. If they be foes, we'll scramble shrewdly with them. If they be friends, they are welcome. One of them, my lord warden, is your friend. But methinks my lady weeps. I like not that. Sir John Oldcastle, Lord Cobham, in the King's Majesty's name, I arrest ye of high treason. Treason? Reason? Blood, what treason? Harbour, I charge thee, stir not, but be quiet still. Do ye arrest me, Lord Warden, for treason? Yea, for of high treason, traitor, heretic. Defiance in his face did cause me so. I am as true a loyal gentleman unto his highness as my proudest enemy. And the king shall witness my late faithful service for safety of his sacred majesty. What thou art, the king's hand shall testify. Heavens defend me. It's possible your cunning could so temper the princely disposition of his mind to sign the damage of a loyal subject. Let me be brought before his majesty. If he acquit me not, then do your worst. We are not bound to do king offices for any traitor, schismatic, nor heretic. The king's hand is our warrant for our work, who is departed on his way for France, and at Southampton doth repose this night. On my expense, bring me to the king. What? To Southampton? Thither, my good lord. And if he do not clear me of all guilt and all suspicion of conspiracy, pawning his princely warrant for my truth. I ask no favor but extremist torture. Bring me or send me to him, good my lord. Come hither, lady. Nay, sweet wife, forbear to heap one sorrow on another's neck. Tis grief enough falsely to be accused and not permitted to acquit myself. Do not thou with thy kind respective tears torment thy husband's heart that bleeds for thee, but be of comfort. God hath help in store for those that put assured trust in him. Dear wife, if they commit me to the tower, come up to London to your sister's house, that being near me, you may comfort me. One solace find I held in my soul. I am free from treason's very thought. Only my conscience, for the gospel's sake, is cause of all the troubles I sustain. Oh, my dear Lord, what shall betide of us? You to the tower, and I turned out of doors. 
our substance seethes unto his highness's use, even to the garments longing to our backs. Patience, good madam. Things at worst will mend, and if they do not, yet our lives may end. No, urge it no more, for if an angel spake, I swear by sweet paint St. Peter's blessed keys, first goes he to the tower, then to the stake. But by your leave, this warrant doth not stretch to imprison her. No, it turn her out of doors. Oh, God requite thee, thou bloodthirsty man. May it not be, my lord of Rochester. Well, wherein have I incurred your hate so far that my appeal unto the king is denied? No hate of mine, but the power of holy church forbids all favor to false heretics. Your private malice, more than public power, strikes most of you. But with my life it ends. I here appeal unto the king, and go we unto royal majesty forthwith to bring all truth and justice to the light. In mine opinion, Scroopeth well advised, poison will be the only aptest mean, and fittest for our purpose to dispatch him. But yet there may be doubt in their delivery. Harry is wise. Therefore, Earl of Cambridge, I judge that way not so convenient. What think ye then of this? I am his bedfellow, and unsuspected nightly sleep with him. What if I venture in those silent hours when, all, when sleep hath sealed up all mortal eyes to murder him in bed? How like ye that? Herein consists no safety for yourself, and you disclosed what shall become of us. But this day, uh, as ye know, he will aboard the wind so fair and set away for France. If as he goes, or entering in the ship, it might be done, then it were excellent. Why, any of these, or if you will, I'll cause a present sitting of the council, wherein I will pretend some matter of such way as needs must have his royal company, and so dispatch him in the council chamber. Tosh, yet... I hear not anything to purpose. Oh, I wonder if that old castle stays so long. His counsel in this case would much avail us. What? Uh, shall we rise thus and determine nothing? Oh, that were a shame indeed. No! Now sit again, and you shall have my counsel in this case. Oh, if you can find no way to kill this king, well, then you shall see how I can further ye. Mm. Well, Scroop's way of using poison, I was indifferent. But yet, being bedfellow unto the king, and unsuspected sleeping in his bosom, in my opinion, that is the likelier way. For such false friends are able to do much, and silent night is treason's fittest friend. Now Cambridge, in his sitting hence for France, or by the way, or as he goes abroad to do the deed, that was indifferent, too. It's somewhat doubtful. Might I speak my mind? Oh, for many reasons, needless now to urge. Mary, Lord Grey, came something near the point. To have the king at council, and there murder him as Caesar was amongst his dearest friends. None like to that, if all were of his mind. Tell me, oh, tell me, you bright honor stains. For which of all my kindnesses to you are ye become thus traitors to your king, and France must have the spoil of Harry's life? Oh, oh pardon, pardon us, dread lord. lord. We meant no hurt unto your majesty, but, uh, you know, reformation of religion. Oh, reform religion? Was that what ye sought? I pray, who gave you that authority? The time was. Good subjects would make known their grief and pray amendment, not enforce the same, unless their king were a tyrant. Which I hope you cannot justly say that Harry is. 
Fie, paltry, paltry, to and fro. Good my liege, a pardon. I am sorry for my fault. That comes too late. But tell me, went there none besides the devious Frenchman upon whom you did depend to be your co-conspirator? None, none, my lord. But Sir John Oldcastle. Bears he part in this conspiracy? We looked, my lord, that he would meet us here. But did he promise you that he would come? Such letters we received forth of Kent. Where is my lord the king? Health to your grace. Examining, my lord, some of these captive rebels, it is a general voice amongst them all that they had never come unto this place, but to have met their valiant general, the good John Oldcastle, as they title him whereby my lord your grace may now perceive his treason is apparent which before he sought to color by his flattery now by my royalty i i would have sworn but for his conscience which i bear with all there had not there had not lived a more true-hearted subject and it is but counterfeit my gracious lord and therefore may it please your majesty to set your hand unto this precept here by which will cause him forthwith to appear and answer this by order of the law bishop not only that but take commission to search attach imprison and condemn this most notorious traitor as you please it shall be done my lord without delay so now i hold john oldcastle in my hand that which shall finish thy disdained life. I think the Iron Age begins but now, which learned poets have so often taught, wherein there is no credit to be given to either words or looks or solemn oaths. For if there were, how often has he sworn, how gently tuned the music of his tongue, and with what amiable face beheld me when all God knows was but hypocrisy. Long life and prosperous reign unto my lord. A villain! Canst thou wish prosperity, whose heart includeth not but treachery? I do arrest thee here myself, false knight, of treason, capital against the state. Of treason, mighty prince, you, your grace mistakes. No. I hope it is in but the way of mirth. Thy neck shall feel it in its earnest shortly. Darest thou intrude into our presence, knowing how heinously thou hast offended us? Oh, but this is thy accustomed deceit. Now thou perceivest thy purposes in vain, with some excuse or other that wilt come to clear thyself of this rebellion? Rebellion, good my lord, I know of none. If you deny it, here is your evidence. See you these men? Are you never counseled, nor offer them any assistance in their wars? Let this, my lord, which I present your grace, speak for my loyalty. Read these articles, and then give sentence of my life or death. Earl Cambridge, Scroop, and Gray, corrupted with bribes from Charles of France, either to win my crown for me or secretly contrive my death by treason. <laughs> it is concluded. There is the platform in their hands, my lord, each severally subscribed to the same. Oh, never heard of. Base ingratitude. Even those I hug within my bosom most are, are readiest evermore to sting my heart. Pardon me, old castle. I have done thee wrong. Hereafter I will live to make amends. Go, take these rebels hence, and let them have martial law. But as for thee, friend to thy king and country, still be free. And France shall dearly buy this villainy, so soon as we have set footing on her breast. God have praise for our deliverance. And next, our thanks, Sir John Oldcastle, is to thee. True, perfect mirror of nobility.